the town where I'm from is near Homa, Louisiana, and it's, it's sinking. I can see that the land is disappearing. It's obvious to everyone. I've heard people say as soon as 50 years, it could be underwater. I grew up in the bayous, so I feel connected spiritually to this area because it's part of me. Thanks to our levee projects, we are able to hold back a lot of that water, but we still need a lot of work to be done. When I was given the opportunity to work in this environment, it was something I felt like I couldn't say no to. South Louisiana is near and dear to my heart. I'm gonna do whatever I can to help preserve it. Coastal Louisiana is unique because we are um, experiencing rapid subsidence, which is the sinking of the land. And um, so we're experiencing local sea level rise that's faster than the rest of the globe. I work at the Water Institute of the Gulf, and the collaboration with Aptum is really important because they provide this service where field scientists and technicians are out collecting data in the field, mostly centered around trying to understand how we can get more sediment to the coastal wetlands to help improve flood protection and ecosystem health. We have a very diverse group of, of people that make this job work. We have uh, very skill and craft level uh, employees all the way up through um, PhD level scientists and biologists and engineers. Michael's role here at Aptum as an engineering tech, he is in our skilled labor category. He provides a service that you, know, you don't necessarily have to go to a four-year degree college to achieve. He has a skill set from his own personal life experience that made him very attractive to us here at Aptum. Michael has the know-how to operate all the equipment we have here, make corrections in the field, handle himself in an emergency situation, and be the lead when it comes to safety. He has the full-on authority to call a trip or push a trip forward. The type of training that I went through to operate an airboat for Aptum, it was about a one and a half to two year process. It can be very challenging at times, but I enjoy that about it. it every single day is different. I'd have to say working in the outdoors is probably my favorite thing about it. It's been awesome to watch from my standpoint, watching him come on as a intern, temporary hire, to being an integral part of this operation down here. This type of work, it's in high demand right now because it's such a dire need for the state. We have to have all different skill sets, different educational backgrounds, different walks of life background that helps us achieve what we're looking to do. The geosciences have uh, traditionally attracted people that are really into um, the outdoors and they choose uh, this field because they think they want to have a career that relate to the way they grew up. And really though, when you get to be a geoscientist through your career, you start to um, realize that it's much bigger than that. We are um, earth scientists and so it's about making a difference in that, and making it lives better on Earth. To grow up in an island like Puerto Rico, you grow up aware of all the coastal issues that communities face. And that prepares you to come to a place like New Orleans and then do the job that we're doing here at the Institute. To be able to be a research scientist today, I did an undergraduate degree in geology at the University of Puerto Rico, and then I did a master's degree in environmental sciences. There are ways of doing graduate school without a financial burden. There are grants and scholarships that you can apply for that can cover the cost of graduate school. So there are opportunities for everyone there. This data that we collect in the field has to be processed and like that's what you do when you're in the office. And so you have to organize it, you have to analyze it, and then you have to present it. And so science is never a one person job. You have to work with a lot of people, right? It's a, it's a teamwork science, and there should not be one stereotype of how a scientist is. When I was growing up, there weren't many, many women doing the work that we do now, but as years pass, I've been able to see that more women and more women of color are incorporated in this field and doing this type of work, which is very important. It's a big responsibility to be a role model for young girls and for kids, but it feels very good when you have young kids looking at you and thinking that they may be there one day or they can do whatever they want to be, they just have to work for it, makes you proud of what you do.